Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Each week, as you know, I invite you to sit in on a conversation with a new guest where we get level, bringing you real people, real issues, and real conversations. My hope is that you walk away from the show inspired and equipped to level up in your own life and leadership. If you'd like a copy of the best of notes and quotes, put your pen aside, no need to take notes yourself. Just simply subscribe to my email list at louiseatreed.com and you will get the best of today's show notes. Without further ado, let me introduce you to today's amazing guest. Today we have with us Kenyatta Turner. Kenyatta is a behavioral superpowers coach, public speaker, motivational educator, and is an accredited business DNA consultant through DNA Behavior. She's the founder of Freedom Empire Consulting, LLC, where they coach, influence, protect, helping clients to build and shield their own freedom empires. Kenyatta is also the chief behavioral superpowers consultant for Dream Start Academy, LLC, serving on the National Advisory Council for Dream Smart, Inc. Spending 25 years in higher education leadership, she earned a master's degree in management and a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Information Systems. Kenyatta is a creative, analytical thinker with an unshakable commitment to helping people flourish throughout their personal, professional, or educational journeys. As a business specialist, as a business solution specialist for Legal Shield, Kenyatta protects families and small business owners by providing access to quality, affordable, legal, and identity theft services. Kenyatta is also an avid volunteer and advocate for social justice and empowering women, regularly dedicating her time and resources to many nonprofit organizations of her choice. Finally, she's an avid reader, a vocalist, a bass player, and has a beloved Rottweiler named Stella. Kenyatta, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh. This, as we were talking about before we hit, um, we st oh, we started the show, mm -hmm. has been a long time coming, girlfriend. I have <laughs> feel like, <laughs> I feel like I've known you and yet we have never actually spoken. So right. that is the power of LinkedIn. So thank you, yeah. LinkedIn. Um, yeah. So there are so many things that you do in this world and so many interesting avenues that we can explore. Um, I think where I'd like to start and let's mm -hmm. see where it goes. I'd love to start with understanding how you made the shift um, working in higher education. I know you were in the admissions area um, and a director of admissions in various mm -hmm. well-known institutions in the United States. And you made a shift at some point point in, 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 in your career. So let's start with that pivot and, and sort of how you came to know that you needed to make a pivot, how you did the pivot. Just, just, let's just start there. Absolutely. So first, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm excited to chat with you and you're right. We, it's a long time coming and it's so crazy. <laughs> like you said, on LinkedIn, you can feel like you, if you use the platform and engage on the platform, you really do get to know people and how they mm -hmm. speak and what they say and well, right, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, and then you really do feel like you get to know them. So this is great. So it's finally good to speak to you. Um, so education. Yeah, I literally started working in colleges when I was like 18 years old. I accidentally kind of fell into it. I was a temp and I got hired at DeVry University and I was there for 13 years and it went by in a flash. <laughs> so, but after I spent a lot of time there, I continued on to other colleges and I loved it. I will ultimately wind up working in almost every department, you know, administrative leadership, executive leadership for all the colleges that I was at, except for financial aid. But what really happened was about 20 years in, I was approaching the age of 39. And why that age is important is because it was the age that my father died. Mm. And when he died, I was 16. We lived together. Uh, my parents were divorced, but I was living with him at the time. And to a 16 year old, 39 seems very old. <laughs> he was my dad. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like he was an old, old dude. <laughs> That's how I <laughs> viewed it, right? But, um, and I also didn't think I would live to be that old for whatever reason. I had this strange idea in my mind that I wasn't going to live to 39. I don't know why. It just, I just remember in my mind thinking it was so old that I was never going to make it that old, right? Yeah. Well, here we are. 
So as I approached the age of 39, I realized that um, I built an amazing career in education. I mean, I'd been there almost 20 or 20 years at that point, just over. Um, I exactly architected my career exactly how I wanted. I was doing very well. I loved it, but I was working like 60, 70, 80 hours a week you know, like building someone else's empire is how I looked mm. at it. Um, but I loved it. I had no issues with that. I absolutely loved what I did. I was going to go get my doctorate degree at that point. I thought I would always work in education. One of my own campus, going to be a campus president and everything. But during that time approaching this birthday, something happened. And I literally, actually, I wound up taking a few days off more than normal. And um, I was reflectively thinking about my life and some things. And I was thinking a lot about my dad, the fact that I was about to turn 39. So what did that mean? Like he didn't make it much past that. So here I was about to do that. And it, it, this idea came in my mind, which is what would he have done if he'd had more time? What would he have done if he had lived to 40, 50, 60, 70? What if he'd done if he lived to 41? <laughs> well, you know, I couldn't answer those questions. Like, was he happy? Did he love his job? Would we have, mo would we have moved? Would he have bought a new car? Would we have traveled. You know, what, what would have happened? We've, well, we have bought a new couch. I mean, these things I could not even answer for him, obviously. He does, he's not able to answer those questions. I'll never know, but I flipped those same questions on myself. That's what changed. I started asking myself, well, what are you going to do, Kenyatta? Are you happy? Are you doing what you want to do? Are you in the right job? Right? Are you, have you, are you fulfilling your purpose? Are you going to move? You going on vacation? <laughs> you going to buy a new couch, right? Yeah. So these are things I started asking myself and I realized I did not have all the answers. And some of the answers actually that I did have made me nervous. Mm -hmm. And I started questioning my path at that point, really going, okay, wait a minute. If you move forward, if you become a, a campus president, if you, if you do the things you're aspiring to take your career to the next level at this moment, what's that going to look like 20 years from now? You know, you'll, they'll make, they'll pay you more money, but you'll probably figure out a way to get more hours out of you guaranteed, you know? Yeah. So what does that really look like? Is that what you want or are you built for more? And ultimately I started having those thoughts in my mind and I became my own catalyst. Meaning once it was in my head, I couldn't get it out. And I was like, you are built for more. There is another way you can help people. You don't have no idea what it is, but you know, you're what you're good at. And which is helping personal development growth. That's what I was doing in all the colleges I worked at. So, so I don't know what it looks like, but I needed to find a way to start a business because people had businesses and I figured I could have one too. So it was really just that idea. Like you just start a business, you know? <laughs> so anyway, I wound up calling my mom and this actually helped me. She helped push me out the door, quite honestly. Uh, my mom, <laughs> my mom has always been an entrepreneur. Uh, I've never known her to work a job. And so, uh, and my dad was always, you know, had a degree, went to DeVry, right? Who's an electronic yeah. engineer. He had the jobby job. My mom was an entrepreneur. So I saw these two different things happening. And it's almost like I uh, went down his path first. Mm. And then I realized there was a shift where I needed to change something. So I called my mom up. I said, mom, I, I'm having, you know, I'm thinking some crazy things. I think I'm, I think I'm going to quit my job and go start a business, you know? And she goes, well, it's about time. <laughs> I was like, and I just said I was going to quit my job. Like, you know, like, did you hear what I said? <laughs> yeah, did you hear me right? <laughs> Mom? She's, yeah, she's like, uh, it's about time. She's like, I was just wondering when you were, when, it, when eventually you would come to that realization and realize that you are built for more and you would go out and do it. She goes, I, just, I knew it would happen eventually because I know who you are. I mean, literally, she told me that. And wow. I was like, well, okay. <laughs> so long story short, it ends with, uh, not much about it, uh, probably a month after that, actually, uh, that little, that whole scenario that happened, yeah. um, I quit because I couldn't physically be in the building anymore. All passion had drained from my body for what I was doing. It was no longer there. I couldn't even fake it. And I knew in that moment I had to get mm -hmm. out because I, I'm not someone who would, who fakes anything. So, mm -hmm. um, my, my whole being had changed and I was more fearful of staying than I was to see what was beyond. Um, I had no job. I didn't have a business. I didn't know what I was <laughs> going to do, but I gave my notice and I said, I'm going to build my empire. I told everyone, they're like, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> but I have to get out of here because I can't breathe. And yeah. so I jumped off a cliff, I say, and sprouted wings. And that's how I started this whole journey. That was oh six, my goodness. Just six and a half years ago.
Six and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I love that story. I had goosebumps as you're as you're sharing it. I want to start by just saying I'm sorry for the loss of your father. Obviously, that was mm. a number of years ago now, but that yeah. doesn't that yeah. that loss is ever present. Um, yes, that's always present. Think about him every day. <laughs> yeah, and um, and what a as almost what a gift, what a gift you allowed his early death to be for you. Um, I, I think of these years as extra years and that's mm -hmm. how I treat them. I mean, I made a decision to go, if I live longer than him, which mm -hmm. it looks like I'm about to do right now, then I will, I will not squander this extra time that I've been given. And I literally think of every minute, every hour, every day I live past him. I feel like I've been given a gift of extra time and I cannot waste it. I, I, I will not, cannot squander my extra time. So I had to make a leap to, to figure out how to live it to the fullest. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that reminds me. It's really inspiring. And it reminds me, my, my sister, when she was 21, was diagnosed with, um, with, a, with a very rare bone marrow disease. And, mm -hmm. and five years later, had to have a bone marrow transplant. And I remember, interestingly, because she doesn't actually have a strong faith, so, but my, my mom does. And mm -hmm. so she was speaking to my mom. And my mom at the time, really upset, thinking that her daughter was, well, my, my sister was on death's door for quite a number of years as we awaited this, this uh, transplant. Mm -hmm. And my sister said, God would not take your mother, which my, her mother died at a very early age, would not take your mother and your daughter, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, but don't ever, <clears throat> don't, she didn't say squander, squander, you just said squander and that's what mm -hmm. came to mm -hmm. mind but not everyone is given the, the, the uh, luxury of growing mm -hmm. old. Not everyone is given the luxury of growing old. And since then, my mom's never commented on a birthday. You know, every, every, every celebration is worth celebrating. Every age, every stage, yep. the good and the bad that come with it all. I'm, um, the, I'm the same way, you yeah. know, my birthday comes around. I'm like, yeah, you yeah. know, I, I feel like I made it, you know, yeah. I, every year I'm like, whew. All right, I made it another one, yeah. you know, and and so what am I gonna do now? <laughs> and so what are you doing now? I know I read your bio, um, oh, but give us a little. Bunch of words. <laughs> I, I, but the fascinating was right. Give us some color and context to sure. what this journey then since leaving higher education, yeah. and putting in your notice, and building your empire. Mm -hmm. Where at the time you're like, I don't know what it is, but I'm doing it. I'm doing um, it. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So I'll go back to my mom for a moment because she <laughs> has a big a, a part of this story is that after I left, put in my resignation notice, you know, went home that day and sat there on the couch like, <laughs> what did I what okay. the hell did I just do? <laughs> what, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, some days I wake up, you know, happy like. <gasps> Phew. Other days I wake up crying. Like I think I was crying in my sleep. <laughs> I wake up, my face is wet. Like, oh my God, what did you just do? My mom calls me one day. It's like a Monday. She's like, what are you doing today? I'm like, I don't know, six weeks later, right? I, you know, about four, no, about four or five weeks later. She said, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. I, I don't know. And she goes, well, why don't you come to me, come with me to this networking meeting uh, with these women that I network with? And, and I knew about the meeting. It's called, um, whisk women I should know okay hmm. I know my mom had been going to this meeting once a month with for lunch for as long as I can remember I've never been never know what happened there because I was at work okay uh -uh. <laughs> so, so she's like come to me to the whisk meeting and I'm like what is that what a bunch of old ladies sitting around you know ha ha uh, eating lunch and she goes Kenyatta those bunch of all those old ladies we're all business owners and I was like hmm that seems like a place I should go right <laughs> anyway I went with her to the meeting and my very first networking meeting and, you know, everyone stands up and says, hey, I'm here. Here's what I do. Here's what I, I offer. Well, I had nothing to offer. So I just stood up and said, yeah, I just quit my job of like 20 years. I don't know what I'm doing. Anybody got any ideas? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and everyone's looking at me like, what? <laughs> so, so someone uh, came up to me afterwards. Her name was Donna and uh, she is in Legal Shield. And she asked me, you know, what do you, what did you say? And I told her, she said something about lawyers. And I was like, I don't need lawyers, you know whatever. I go, but I like you. I said, let's, I want to talk to you because you're fun and I like you. So I don't know what you're talking about these lawyer things, but I want to talk to you. So anyway, I wound up joining Legal Shield about a week later. Once I saw what Legal Shield did, I was like, oh my God, that's how I can build my empire. 
like I believed in the service hundred percent. I needed the service because I had an, an, an ex who owed me some money that I needed to talk to a lawyer about. And, <laughs> and I'd never heard of such a crazy thing, like 25 bucks a month. I could call a lawyer about anything I want. I'd never heard of it. And so I saw it, I met people in it and I was like, I believe in justice. I believe in social justice. I believe in equality. I believe in opportunity. All of those things I'm always about anyway. If I can help someone level the playing field, then I'm in. That's why I love working at colleges so much. It gave people an opportunity. And so it made sense. Legal Shield made sense. And that's where I started my building my empire. So I just jumped in both feet. And that's what I did. Working with employers, small businesses, families, identity theft, the whole thing. Then a couple years later, I started uh, teaching personal development, like a, a, a critical thinking class, really, at a college for students who are about to get their GEDs. They have to go through my seminar before they can move forward with those classes. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd already left the industry, but here's what I missed. I missed the students. Right. I didn't miss running the departments. I didn't miss <laughs> all the red tape. I didn't miss signing people's time cards. You know, I oh, missed yeah. the, the environment of the students. And so I realized when someone called me about this position, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want a job. You know, it sounds like a job, you know, teaching, <laughs> I'm not interested. <laughs> Right. But then I, I took a closer look at it and I realized, wow, this is an opportunity for me to kind of take it full circle. Right. I can help these students in this way. I can share with them what I've learned and give them some guidance to, before they even start college to help them hopefully avoid some of the pitfalls, all the pitfalls mm -hmm. I saw of people going to college if I can affect them on the front end. So let me try this out. Well, ultimately, it was a perfect fit for me. I'm still doing it now, four years later. Mm -hmm. And it really became a training ground for me, if you will, for my coaching and development and it was through that process that i realized wait a second this is the the empire that i was supposed to build i need this is what i need to be doing on a larger grander scale not just for someone in this one class and not just for as my job because i'm running this department or whatever and not just for my legal shield team that i'm coaching and training but there's something else here and i just started just doing the process of doing the reflection on myself and the, the work, my personal development, reading books, you know, surrounding myself by the right people, sitting down with my journal, like really doing the inner work, meditating, all those things to really figure out what it was I was supposed to be doing. And, um, and then it was revealed to me and I was like, oh, this is the empire is about five years in. And, and that's interesting because you hear about the five-year plan, right? About people talk about that. Have a three to five-year plan because if you know where you want to be in five, then by three, you should probably get some things done mm. to get to the five, right? And sometimes it takes that long to really understand what it is that you are working through. Most people don't even last that long in the thing, you know? Uh, <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It takes time. <laughs> I... I so appreciate you being so upfront and, and honest about this because, um, well, because it's the truth, first of all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but also we do live in this Instagram and social media world where we compare our insides and how we feel about our own journey to other people's right. outsides, right? Because right. we see the images, the perfection right. on social and so we're judging ourselves and our own progress against a false uh, image or a single, you know, a short 30 second story that we might be right. seeing on social or the best images. I mean, for the, cause for the most part, let's be honest. I mean, I, I do, I do very much try and post journey stories, but mm -hmm. for the most part, I'm trying to find some pretty kick-ass pictures of myself to post on social. I'm not looking Absolutely. for my crappiest <laughs> version of myself. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't think most people are trying to make others feel crappy about themselves, but I think that has ended up becoming part of what happens. And so yeah. yes. I know I, this is a long tangential point for me getting to me saying your commentary around the reflection, the work, the journaling, the meditating, the inner work, and that it just takes time for all of these pieces to be revealed. Right. And then to actually sew themselves and, and to intentionally knit them yes. together in a way that leverages your unique experiences, because you've got 20 plus years experience, you've got mm -hmm. a master's degree, you've got mm -hmm. passions and interests. And like, so the way that those all come together isn't just sitting down one day and deciding what's my purpose. It doesn't work like that. No, it no, like that. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. No. And you're so right. Because again, it does have to knit itself 
together. The, the challenge I think many people have is that they, it, that's work. You know, what's the quote, right. you know, people miss opportunities because it's dressed up in overalls and looks like work. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like nobody wants to do that. You haven't heard that one? Yeah. You know? I forget who said that, but it, you know, <laughs> so nobody wants to work. No one wants to do the hard thinking that it takes. Mm. Like it's so much easier to, you know, and Martin Luther King has a, a quote. It just dawned on me. I, I um, Oh God. Uh, rarely do people do the hard, solid thinking. Nothing pains people more than having to think. It's something about they'd always rather do get like half-baked solutions and quick answers right. to things. And to sit down and do that work is so powerful. So I learned to do that. Mm -hmm. And through that, it came to be. But here's where, here's the gasoline that got thrown on the fire. Like literally, that's what happened. It was like gasoline, fire, <laughs> explosion. <laughs> and it was um, when I got introduced to Greg, Dr. Greg Spencer, um, he works for a company called uh, Footsteps to Brilliance, but he's also associated with Dream Smart Academy. When, when I got introduced to Dream Smart Academy and what they do to coach, train, and mentor teens and young adults and professionals through their whole personal development platform, and then they showed me the what we now call behavioral superpowers, mm -hmm. that was the gasoline on the fire. Mm -hmm. Because what I saw in that is first I saw me going, this is everything you've always been your whole life. Okay. Right here. Here's why you do what you do. Here's why you won't do other things. Right. Here's why you're not good at that thing. Here's why you should pay someone to do that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, here's why these things, but more importantly, once you have the self-awareness and understanding of yourself, clearly you have a better chance of doing that with others. So it made me do what I was, be better at what I was doing for mm. the people I was trying to help because I had my own self-awareness. Then I could help them get theirs. Then we could just meet in the middle and just get to work. So I tested that. I used it in my classroom. I used it for workshops. I used it for coaching. I'm like, let's see how many applications this behavioral superpower thing, I used it on 12 year olds, mm -hmm. you know, to see changed everything game changer game changer and i said this is what i'm supposed to be doing this is the freedom empire my whole behavioral consultancy is built around this tool and everything else that we bring into the universe we call it because it can just be used in so many applications and legal shield came into it because there was always going to be a place for legal shield there and that's why it's coach influence protect so i'm a behavioral superpowers coach my behavioral superpowers is influencer that's one of the 10 that's why the influence is there and then protect is the legal shield because if you're going to help, if, you're, if I'm going to build someone's empire, mm -hmm. I know that they need a lawyer. <laughs> I know they need identity theft protection. I know they need to protect their family and get their wills done. They need to, you know, make sure everything's straight with their insurance. They need hiring, whatever, right? These are legalities that are around building a business and protecting your family. So for me, it just kind of all came together and that was what was revealed to me as Freedom Empire Consulting. And that took time to come to that. It does. And I, I like what you were saying as well um, about the need to, um, to protect because something that I have, uh, I'm guilty of um, is getting lost in the, like I'm a, I, I love personal development. That's what I do. I do coaching. I do leadership mm -hmm. development. It's po really positive stuff. And yes. that's why I like to play. And so I have learned about myself that I sometimes put my head in the sand when it comes to the harder things, mm -hmm. the harder things related to finances, the harder things related to right. things that just don't feel as good. Yeah. And feel so good. I, I really like your, you know, your approach to ensuring like a very fulsome, grounded, inspired and say, like you, you can be inspired and still be responsible. Both, both belong together. Yes, they do. And they're hard together if you're not <laughs> wired for that. And I'm not quite honestly, like my, my behavioral style is extremely abstract, very flexible, very, um, results focused, um, kind of like promote, like I'm, I'm not into that stuff. However, I'm so glad I have resources that can help me keep that stuff straight because that's not my natural tendency to go to. I, I rather not. You and I kind of talked about that when we're talking about mm -hmm. a day, right? We did. Or messing about that. I'm like, man, I don't like any, eh. you know, <laughs> I'm not interested. But someone else, you know, has a score in a certain area for systematic where they're just like rows and columns all day, you know, and they're like, did we send that email out yet? I'm like, I don't know, you know? <laughs> and so 
this is perfect to find the people, you know, I think about the Avengers, right? I love my, my superheroes, right? And that's part of how yeah. we came up with the whole behavioral superpowers. Like we kept talking about that. And you think about like the Avengers, right? And they're Avengers. Everyone's got a job. You know, you don't, you send in certain people to do certain things. They pass and lob things off to each other when they're fighting the villain because, you know, they can work as a team to do that. So you don't want to step on Hulk's toes. Let Hulk go in and smash some stuff. That's what he does. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's what he does. So get, get out of the way. Let him go do that. And I use that analogy often too, because I love the, the idea that how we're wired, right? Our hard natural wired behavior is ingrained in our amygdala is like at the age yeah. of three, right? And that's just the way it is. So these behaviors are critical. And that's why I call them powers because they're just are, they're like, you know, like mutants, they're, we're born with that. So, but then Hulk, he smashes and that's his power. His kryptonite or his challenge is turning back into Bruce Banner when he needs to. Mm -hmm. or turning into the Hulk when he needs to. He has struggled with being able to control the power. And so he's caused challenge. He's caused, caused issues because he, he smashed too many things, right? Or something went wrong because he couldn't turn into Hulk and save the day. Right. So when he learned to control it and kind of be both at the same time, like that's the power. And that's what mm -hmm. I learned how to do. And still learning. That's why, that's why I'm able to do that's why I, I, may, I have found a way to do what I call walking in my greatness, meaning I know what my behavioral superpowers are. I know where my powers lie and I'm very clear on my kryptonite. And I know that sometimes my outgoing fast paced influencer mm -hmm. style is not the best fit for a certain situation. And I might need to adjust my behavior. Maybe I need to bring my tone down. Maybe I need to slow down depending on who I'm talking to because I'm like, Bleh you know? <laughs> and, and again, it's about self, that self-awareness. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered the question, but that's what I'm doing now. Is I don't really, remember the question, but that was yeah, totally awesome. Something answer. Something like that, you know? <laughs> so I, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to help people understand or see that they have, there is something called a behavioral superpower. Cause now we're all about letting everyone know about this. Like we want okay. the world to know. So, um, I know the answer to this, although you may give me even a broader answer than what mm. I have in my mind, but for the sake of our listeners, um, why, why does it matter that someone identifies their superpowers? So if someone's listening right now, I'm kind of like, yeah, that sounds great, but you know, I'm fine. What will, what will identifying mm -hmm. and leveraging their superpowers sure. do to someone? Talk us through that a little bit. First, um, if a person desires to have improved communication with the people that they love and they care about, this is a great place to start mm -hmm. because we know that statistically, I think it's like 86% of issues in business and life, these performance issues are due to behavior meaning how someone just naturally shows up under stress, anxiety, fear, love, greed. Um, Mike Tyson has a, was quoted as saying um, after he bit off Evander Holyfield's ear, um, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Sure everyone's got a plan to get punched in the mouth. And I quite honestly feel right now, the whole world's been punched in the mouth, mm. hard. And so all of us are under stress and under pressure. And in times like that, scientifically, your behavioral superpowers bubble up to the surface. And I'm not talking about strengths and weaknesses here. And that's, I think that's something I, I need to clarify with when I do talk to people about this, because they think about other like personality-based tests where um, it's telling what their strengths and their weaknesses are. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about your hardwired behavior, which may not be a strength or a weakness. It just depends on the moment and the application. Hmm. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, well, I'm good. Why do I need to know that? Well, first off, I would ask you to really go, are you sure you're good? <laughs> like for one, right? Mm -hmm. Like, is there not a relationship in your life that you would want to improve? And if you think that improving it could become from having a better understanding of the other person, then you darn well better take a deeper look inside yourself first. <laughs> and that's, yeah. then you can go from there. Because again, if I'm someone like who's always outgoing and fast paced and quick moving, spontaneous. I'm not always going to mesh well with someone who's very reserved and concrete and slower paced and systematic. There's going to be friction. And how often do we think that it has something to do with us? Like the person who doesn't call you back soon enough, you take it personal. 
and you're like, oh, why haven't they called me back? Blah, 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 blah. Well, it might be because they might, they could be reflective thinker. Like my business partner, Jeff, he's a, re that's literally his behavioral superpower. He's a reflective thinker. And someone might think, well, that doesn't sound like much of a power, but it is because he will slow it down. He focuses on quality. He will be all about the information. He will not miss or skip a beat. Whereas me, I'm like, look, I need three bullet points. I'm out. Right. <laughs> yes. You know? And so there's a balance there, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're listening going, why is it important for me to know uh, more about myself is because that's where it starts. Any issues you're having with any relationship in your life, it could be you. Hold <laughs> you <know>? up, right? <laughs> if, you're, if you find yourself pointing the finger out at others, take a moment and hold the mirror up and see if what you're saying about others is actually a reflection of yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of times it really truly is because we aren't clear and we're not owning our, our skills. Right. Um, and we're, and not only we're we not owning it. And I said this the other day, I'm like, write that down. I said, own it and hone it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, write that down. He texted, he's like, I'm texting to you right now. So you don't forget. Right. <laughs> but, but the idea that, you know, own who you are at your core, like I'm going to be an outgoing fast paced influencer. So is my mother right? She, she's, she's an influencer too. My sister's a facilitator. We need to own these things. Do not apologize for who you are at your core, but you better recognize when who you are at your core is not showing up the way they need to in the moment to help improve the situation. And you might be making it worse. Not only, even, not only it doesn't always have to do with it being involved with someone else though, too. So let's take a moment and scratch the idea that we're even talking about communications with someone else. What about the communications you're having with yourself? Mm -hmm. Because for instance, as a business owner, I'm my boss and I'm my employee. And I can guarantee I should have been fired from both of those jobs <laughs> at some point. So how do I use that self-awareness to like look at myself and go, okay, well, Kenata, no one else is really affected by this, <laughs> this uh, little circus show you got going on here. <laughs> so how are you going to show up for yourself in the moment to learn what you need to learn to do the thing you need to do to help more people? So if I can't, be clear and have clarity of myself and then clarity of purpose based on who I am, then I, I am pretty much subscribing to more struggle than, than is required because I can find a way to level that out if I do that self-awareness work. So. Uh, you said it a few times that that's where it all starts. And I can't emphasize that enough. Like just hear, hear to that. Mm -hmm. um, such, such power in that. Because then it doesn't matter what life throws at you. Right. Another COVID, you know, another pandemic, another national or global yes. crisis, um, mm -hmm. whatever it may be in, right. you have the ability then to go in and pivot. Yes. Um, it, it, it brings me to something we were talking about earlier um, mm -hmm. before the show started. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about, um, I walked away with your strong ability to keep a positive energy of focus. Um, we were talking at the time around what you can control, what you can't control. Mm -hmm. I know there's lots of conversations around that, but I think that you just have a really exceptional way of looking at that and being able to stay in that place yourself. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you, what choices you make so you're able to maintain this positive centeredness and energy of focus? Um, I think you said it right then is the, the choices that I make to, to, to do that. Um, I think that I've learned it's probably especially over the six years of being an entrepreneur and I, and I guess it has to go back again to personal development it's because when I really started actively being intentional about my personal growth, I was being introduced to ideas and concepts that all kept going around to the same theme, which is you can only control your thoughts and your actions. And so I realized that, okay, <laughs> that, if that's all I really can control, then what do I want to think? And it just starts there. So if something happens, I know 
every time I get to decide how I'm going to respond and what I'm going to think about it. Now, what I'm saying is not easy to do. Mm. It's actually harder. Um, it's hard, it's harder to do it than to, to not do it. Right? right. And so, um, but it really just comes down to that. I just made a choice. Kenyatta, you are going to live in your happy bubble <laughs> as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And as unrealistic as some may think that is, first off, I don't care <laughs> what, they, <laughs> what they think about. I vibe about that. I don't care. <laughs> you know, and someone's like, you're so positive and you, why, blah. I'm like, you got problems if you think it's possible to be too positive. I don't know what your issue is, <laughs> right? And so I let that stuff go, you know, yeah. it really just is a conscious decision to go, look, I can control my thoughts and my, my actions. I cannot control what you do. I cannot control what you think. So as the world is spinning out of it, around me, I will always stop and go, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Stuff's getting crazy. <laughs> what can I control right now? What really, really, really affects me right now, this minute. Oh, and I'll add this listeners. If you're listening out there, someone dared me six years ago to stop watching the news. And I was like, why? I, I need to watch the news so I know what's, what's going on. And they're like, do you? And I was all, I don't know. I felt like I do because I've always done it. <laughs> they're like, do you feel good when you're done watching the news? Do you feel I'm like, no, it's no miserable. <laughs> they're like, why are you doing it then? I'm like, I don't know, right? So if you think about all the things that you do in your life that just cause negative vibes and negative energy and you just still keep doing it, I just started paying attention to that stuff. Oh, that, that's not good. That doesn't make me feel good. That doesn't serve me. That gives me a pit in my stomach. Mm -hmm. That's not good. You know, I, I can't run away from all the bad feelings that I have, but here's the thing. When they come and I feel like they're warranted, I own them. Mm -hmm. I absorb them. I sit in the moment of what I need to do with that emotion. And then I keep it moving. I don't stay there too long. And now again, this is partly how I'm wired. I know this and I know it's not the same for everyone or as easy for everyone. However, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. We do only, know that now. Okay, only, only. Yeah, only if the dog wants to learn. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, but how hard will it be? How painful is it gonna be? How long is it gonna take? But it's possible. You can reprogram certain things, even at a hardwired level. All it means is that it's gonna be a harder flex to get there than some other people. But you can just create a positive mindset, like, and you can just do that on a daily basis. But you have to work on it every single day. You have to own it. You have to believe it. It's not about just reading some little affirmation. It's so much deeper than that. You can read affirmations all day long, and it will not help you if you do not believe it. The ether knows this, by the way. You put that energy out there. Ether's like, mm, you don't believe that. So you, so don't waste your time if you don't believe it, right? But, but I, I do believe in in putting out the energy that I want to come back. And I do believe in protecting myself from the negativity that people will so easily try to just sprinkle around you. I'm like, mm -mm, ain't coming in. Nope. And, uh, and again, that's not for everyone. And I've been told many times by people who I probably don't hang out with anymore is that <laughs> you, can't, you can't always do that. You can't always be like that. And I'm like, Watch me. how do you even know these things? So yep. anyway, that's how I do it. I just, I stay diligent at it and I work at it every damn day. <laughs> uh, I am, um, I love all of what you just shared. I love similar to what I was commenting on previously about you as when you were, you know, you found your purpose, you were talking about it taking five years and then it was reflection, it was work, it was journaling, it was all these things and, and time to integrate all these pieces. I appreciate this last commentary around maintaining a positive focus because it's the same sort of theme in that it takes intention, it takes diligence, it takes commitment, it takes a wanting to, wanting to and a willingness to um, go against the grain. Yes. Because the grain, unfortunately, is a very negative one. <laughs> yes. um, and so to, to sort of echo what you were saying, like, so first of all, kudos to you. And for those who ha feel that they are surrounded by too much negativity, um, I encourage you to do sort of what Kenyatta just suggested, like take stock, become an observer of right. your thoughts and actions. Instead of getting yes. wrapped up in them, just be an observer for a bit as you kind of go through the day, pay attention mm -hmm. and start noticing. 
Mm-hmm. You, know, you really can make small, subtle shifts and changes. And that's really what, that's what day over day over day added together is really what creates these kinds yes. of shifts. Yes. So thank you, you for to, sharing. You have to want to. You have to want to in the face of those who won't be on your side with it. And I think that's probably the other thing too. Oh, yeah. Is that you're going to be faced. If you, if you make a decision that you want to aspire to greatness, whatever that is, um, I describe it to my GED students like this when they say, I'm going to get my GED, right? Is that imagine you and your whole family in a dark, or you're not family, but just whoever's close to you, you're all in a pitch black room and you stand up and go, hey, I'm going to get my GED or hey, I'm going to start being more positive or hey, I'm going to take this class and do whatever. It's almost like a spotlight then shines on you really, really bright because you just said something and everyone turns and looks at you, right? They can all see you and they're staring at you. But what happens is that the people who are closest to you, some of that light like leaks onto them and they don't always like it. Mm. And that's something to be aware of because mm-hmm. when that light kind of leaks on them, they're like vampires, like, <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't want that light on them because it reveals what they might not be doing. And that can become a challenge for you because now you've got this person who I call them the dream killers. Now they're like in your ear, you know who they are. Everybody knows who their dream killers are. They're all, nah, nah, nah. they always got something to say and, and they probably love you and care about you, but they think they, think they know what's best for you. Um, and they can be living in your house. They can be sleeping in your bed. You have to watch out for them because again, you have to be able to stand up to the face in the face of all adversity, no matter what, and go, this is what I want for myself and I'm going to do it. And I don't care that you don't like it. And I don't care that you don't agree with it, but because, but so you have to be convicted mm-hmm. to that and committed to that, even though not only will you have to watch your own negative self-talk, but there'll be others who got plenty to say too. And that's, that's a challenge right there to still do it any way. Oh my gosh. We're talking about some tough stuff. Hey, like this is real stuff and tough stuff. It sounds simple until you're in it. And then uh, I think anyone who has started their own business or done anything that's outside of the norm or outside of what was expected of them. Right. Yes. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Has, has rub up against this. And um, it does take a really strong mindset and conviction to be able to persevere in the face of that. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's the people who love you most who speak up the most. Are the loudest. (laughs) And sometimes not in the best way. Right, Um, right. So given where you're at in your life and your career now, I'm thinking, sorry, I'll I'll pause for a second. I'm thinking back to earlier in the show where you were commenting on you had your career kind of mapped out and you sort of knew what success looked like. Yeah. Right? Totally been there, done that, got the t-shirt and it it didn't didn't work out. Yeah, it didn't work out. I pivoted. Um, And so I had to redefine what success was and that was a really tough thing too. Yeah. Because I thought I had it clearly laid out. It was this, it was this job. It was this amount of money. It was this car. I was living in this kind of house. Mm-hmm. It was this number of kids by this age. I got it all. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I did it. I'm miserable. Um, <laughs> so what does success look like for you right now? How do you define success? Mm. Well, first, from a definition standpoint, success to me quite, quite simply is setting a goal and accomplishing it. Right. <laughs> so, so that's what success is. Like I said, I wanted to do that thing and I did it. Success, right? right? But outside of that, it really truly is to me freedom. Mm-hmm. And that's why my company, that's why it's free. That's why you hear me talk about, well, you, I don't know if you hear it or not, but I'm always talking about freedom. Yeah. I'm always like freedom this, freedom that. You know, and everyone's like, why are you always talking about that? Because to me, it's really a mindset Uh, more than anything than a physical thing. You know, it's like, I want freedom. That is success to me. Freedom to do what I want, when I want, how I want, with who I want, for as long as I want, (laughs) and come back and have plenty of money in the bank. (laughs) Right? It's like, it's the freedom to go, you know what, I want to start a business. Or the freedom to go, you know, I feel like I want to call so-and-so right now. I mean, these are, could be simple things, right? But just, but the freedom to say, you know, I get to choose, I get to decide. So to me, success is creating a life I don't need to take vacation from. 
-hmm. a life where I have the freedom to make it work or screw it up. You know, the, the freedom to associate with who I want and, and find a way to help people in a way that makes sense for me. And, and it just means, let me do what I want. You know, as long as I'm doing, it's not hurting anybody. You know, I feel like that is success, creating this environment. And then to add money on top of that, which I clearly will, because I need that. You know, I, I have a yacht on my dream, but I need a yacht. Okay. <laughs> so that's not free. So I need money and a lot of it so I can have freedom to do what I want. <laughs> you know, so, so freedom to build this empire, create a business that can leave a legacy for my family. You know, that is freedom. That is success. I am doing it right now. Now, am I done? No. Have I made all the money I need to make? No. <laughs> you know, am the I on still on the vision board, friend? Yeah, still on yeah. the vision board, you know, <laughs> but the, but the freedom to like build that dream yeah. and to consciously make decisions towards making it happen. That is freedom to me. Yeah. I'm not oppressed and I don't allow other people to oppress me. And I try to not oppress myself. That is freedom and that is success. So I am successful in that right, but I'm not done. I have other things I am trying to build, but the fact that I can dictate this journey and have a conversation with someone like you about it, that's freedom to me. Because mm -hmm. someone might be listening and go, you know what? I can have freedom too. You know, that's, that's all I want. It's for someone else to go, because if I figured this out, I know I'm morally obligated to tell other people about it, or I'm just a jerk who's keeping right. secrets. <laughs> and I can't do that. So that's, that's success for me, to be able to share that message. That's amazing. Um, so much of what you said, I know others listening will resonate with, is one that um, in particular stood out to me. You said, freedom to me means I have a life I don't need to take vacation from. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's just because of the time of year that it is, you know, schools just starting back up, certainly in Canada, I think in the US, certainly pockets of the US, it starts in August. Mm -hmm. um, but people just finishing vacations and there's a level of mild, I don't wanna say depression, but like mild depressive tendencies I have found mm. over the years working in corporate. Oh God. That comes in September when vacations are done and there's this long haul and push till Christmas, uh, maybe Thanksgiving uh, in the U.S. is there's sure. more of a holiday than the, in Canada. Uh, and gosh, yeah, like, is that is that really living? <laughs> is that is that really living? Um, for, for some it is because they tell themselves that it is, and that's okay. But for some, it's not because they say no, it's not. Because no, it's not. It's no, it's not. <laughs> and that's not okay. <laughs> you know, today's today's a holiday for a lot of people, Labor Day, right? And someone's like, "Oh, what are you doing for Labor Day?" And I'm like, "Um, uh, whatever I want." <laughs> because, <laughs> because again, you know, I don't. I can take a day when I need to take a day, yes. right? That that's the freedom, right? If I need a vacation, I take a vacation. But I'm yeah. doing what I love, so I don't need vacation from it. Yeah. I just simply choose, okay, this is my break. I'm, I'm a proponent of the 12 week year. I, I coach it. I'm, I live on a 12 week year cycle. So I live in these little blocks, strategic block, buffer block and breakaway block. I put breakaway yeah. block in whenever I need it throughout the day to where I don't need to, you know, not to say I can't, won't go on vacation. You know what I mean? It's not about that though. It's about that mentality though, that people have like, oh my God, I can't, I can't wait for the weekend. Or I can't wait for the three day weekend or whatever. I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to live like that. You know, like -uh. I'm trying to squander my time. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to live it how I want it. You know, live it how I want it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's hard though. It's hard. So it is. I, you, you've said that all along and I really, I know I've said it a few times already, but I really like it because I love how positive you are and how real you are. Right? It doesn't mean just because someone is positive doesn't mean there is not hardship that accompanies it from time, mm -hmm. right, from time to time. Right. Both can coexist. You can go through hard things with a level of um, optimism and positivity. Absolutely. Uh, while still being crappy in some of those moments, yes. but moving forward in spite yes. of them and ha not having them weigh and hold you down. Um, we're coming kind of close to the top of the hour. I'm wondering if I can ask mm -hmm. you some rapid fire questions. Sure. 
Ooh, rapid fire. Sounds fun. Rapid fire. I know. <laughs> um, what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> start personal development much sooner. Pick up Think and Grow Rich and read it over and over again. <laughs> that's what I, I would say. Younger self, that's what you need to do. Hallelujah. Think and Grow Rich. We'll put that in the show notes. Mm hmm for sure. I echo that. Mm -hmm. um, what does the world need more of? <laughs> love was the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just all you need is love. You know? And I know that's not all you need, but mm -hmm. I think that it could be, there could be a lot more of it. Um, a lot more kindness, but love was the first word that came to my mind, which, you know, I think comes with, with kindness. So. Nice. Um, do you have a go-to book or podcast that you'd like to Give a shout out to to the listeners. Recommend to recommend. I'd, ha I'd have to go back to uh, Think and Grow Rich. I, I, yeah. I read it over and over again. Continue like every twelve weeks, I read it again. Um, so I, that's my go-to. That's a that's definitely a, a um, and Think and Grow Rich for women as well. But it's a it's a a manual of sorts that's helped me create what I have created over the last several years. So it is. I go back to it again and again. And it helps me to create the next thing I need to. Mm -hmm. So I go back wow. to that. That's pretty powerful. And that book was written, when was that written? 38, published in 38. Incredible. And I would also add um, Outwitting the Devil to that list. Hmm. Not read um, that one. And, and it just recently came out in 2011. Um, Sharon Lecter uh, was asked by the Napoleon Hill Foundation to, um, to create this manuscript. He actually wrote that right after he wrote Think and Grow Rich and his wife would not let him publish it. So the book stayed in the vault for 70 years. And then it was given to her a few years ago and she took his manuscript and wrote it. And I get chills even thinking about it right now. So it's Napoleon Hill's conversation with what he calls the devil. And it's his experience that happened before he wrote Think and Grow Rich and what drove him to write Think and Grow Rich. So if you haven't read that one, then I'm on it. That one. Top um, of the list. And you should listen, you should listen to it in um, Audible. Okay. Because there's two conversations happening. There's Napoleon Hill's voice and there's the devil's voice. Right. And it's like, like my, my face is getting, it's, it's crazy. I've, I've been through it twice so far in a mastermind and, it, and I'm about to go through it again. It's, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever seen or wow. read before. So I'm on it. Great compliment Thank you. for thinking we're rich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and then my final question, um, tell us a little bit about what's next for you. Well, um, so now that I've gotten the, the foundation, I would say, of Freedom Empire Consulting, and I've realized, okay, this is what it is. This is what it's called. Here's my little logo, you know, and things <laughs> like that, right? I'm getting official, right? Um, really, next steps are continuing to build the brand of me, Kimiata Freedom Empire Consulting, um, what that looks like digitally, right? It's the digital mm -hmm. age. I mean, I, you know, websites and things like that. Um, I'm launching a new program specifically for women, a mastermind specific for women. I won't tell you what it's called yet because it's not time, but um, it's coming. So I have some new programs, some new coaching things that I'm putting together for me myself. However, but when it comes to the behavioral superpower piece, that's a universe that I'm like part of the one heading that up. So what's next is really we are working with lots of different types of organizations to use this information to help people get the awareness that they need mm -hmm. through the behavioral superpower. So what's next is continuing to build that universe and at the same time build Freedom Empire Consulting because those are kind of one, they, they, they go together, those two things. So what's next is um, it's go time. It's you go know? time. It's go time. You okay, <laughs> so, so I'm hearing, so um, people who could benefit from you, I think your services, I, I know that it'll be broader than this, but if we're just to really yeah. hone in, it sounds to mm -hmm. me like Certainly, if someone is a leader within an organization, yes, right, absolutely. the superpower, the behavioral superpowers could help them with team development, with hiring, absolutely. with knowing themselves and just leading, being a better leader themselves. Yes, Leader. okay, yes, yes. Um, and then um, your coaching practice. What do you? Who? Who would you typically serve and help? I'm trying to think. If, what a listener right now? Absolutely. How would they know to? Re who are they and how would they know yes, to reach out to Yes, you? yes, yes. So as of late, and I will say this is probably the, the most way to kind of narrow it down because this is what's been happening lately with my coaching programs. They, 
typically have been women, while not all, um, but it seems like that's kind of been a theme that it's been women. They have been business owners um, who are in various stages of their business, but usually more established than not. Um, and they have been people who really have found themselves at a point either in their careers or their businesses where they're like, what's next, what's next level? They're and they kind of watch plateaued. My, yeah, plateau. They might ask questions like, I don't know what I want to do next and this and that. And my first go-to with everyone is, is what do you want? And as soon as I get that blank stare, then I know I can help. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So great. So if that is you listening right now, reach out to Kenyatta. And Kenyatta, how can people best reach out to you to find out more about you, have a connection call, or utilize your services? What's the best Absolutely. Way? You can go to my website at www.freedomempireconsulting.com. That's www.freedomempireconsulting.com. And also, if you type in that and do slash freebie, F-R-E-E-B-I-E, -E, um, then I have a little freebie. And actually, it's the top 10 super secret hacks to unleashing your behavioral superpowers. I and it just it. has some tips for you. So you can get the little freebie and you can contact me through the website and everything like that. But check out I the freebie. Love it. Check out the freebie. I will include that in the show notes. So if you are driving right now, please don't try to type that in your phone. It's don't in the show notes. So pick it up <laughs> <laughs> after you have caught the show. Uh, Kenyatta, Ah, oh, what a joy you have been. Just a treat. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me and my listeners um, and just for sharing all of what you did with us today. Thank you for having me. And it was a great conversation. It was fun to get to know you better too. So we have to do Thanks. this again. We Thanks. will, for sure. <laughs> and of course, thanks to all of you as well for tuning in to today's show. And I invite you to contact me directly at louisehreed.com. If you have any questions or want to chat with me about coaching, speaking engagements, or leadership consulting, let's all live inspired, grow together, and be brave, be bold, and be happy. Until next week, I'm Louise H. Reed, wishing you all an amazing day. Goodbye, friends.